to say that much, you know, I am so happy to be here today, really. And I think this is the first time that all of us we came in together. Uh, and I think still we need to talk. Still we need to tell our stories. Uh, establishing campaign now, I don't think it's going to help us, you know. We need more like this. Uh, we need to involve uh, big people, you know, in this movement. And I think there are a lot of issues that should be, should be uh, 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 told, you know, in, in this meeting. For us as Africans, you know, we're coming from, I'm, I'm Sudanese, I'm coming from Sudan. And the only reason uh, bring, uh, brought me to this country it is uh, we have no justice there in our country. And we've been uh, governed by the uh, Islamic regime. He was a unionist involved in the uh, union movement from I was 17 years old. And I've been uh, arrested four times. I've been torched. I've been uh, dismissed from my uh, work for more than five or six uh, times. And uh, always knowing more very, 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 very hard. When I came here, and I have, you know, just a little bit of English, it is all right, I can, you know, my, my, my things. But now I am knowing a lot. And that brings to me, I am being hunted by a lot of bad women. I think uh, the story of this country is really painful. And uh, as us, uh, as us, a refugee coming from Africa. We just want to live in peace. We want to, we want to contribute to this country. And uh, we don't come in here with, with the gun. We don't, we don't, <laughs> with <laughs> nothing, you know, no. We don't have anything that we, we are ashamed of it. We like any kind of people uh, when they are uh, being scared, when they being frightened, they try to find somewhere and to, to live in. And I just want to share here a story happening in my workplace. Uh, we have a, a position for delegate union. And it's been advertising. And I nominate myself. I know that, you know, my, my, my chance <laughs> in getting this position is, 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 is really... Uh, I just want to practice my right. And I just want to get to know uh, the democracy. Freedom and the big words here. You know. And after three or four days, I spoke to the delegate union in my workplace. I told him that I nominate myself. I am very happy you know, that. And I want to ask him what the next step. And he turned to me laughing and he said that he wanted to make a delegate union. I said to him, why? He said to me, because you have broken English. And even him, it's very hard for him to understand me. And because I can't keep silent, <laughs> my life always about standing for my rights. I said to him that I think the only, the people, they have to decide if they want me or not, not you. And I went straight away. I called from my supervisor office. She asked me if I want to report that to the company. I said to her, even I am aware, this is responsibility of the company, but I want to take this. Uh, uh, I, I want to take his coming to the union in this stage. And I call the, 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 the unions, and the unions in this country is business. <laughs> Even if you want to have a, a meeting in the union, they pay you. In our country, you risk your life to be in the union. <laughs> and you pay from your bucket from the union here, they pay you. Uh, <laughs> I called him and I told him the whole story. Uh, he said to me he had no right to make any uh, condition for, for you 
but I am not going to go any longer with that. I ask him, what do you mean by that? By that? You mean by that uh, this is the end of the story? What, up, what the responsibility of the union uh, representative multiculturalism <laughs> people? We, we have original in our uh, company. We have uh, uh, other uh, African people, people coming from everywhere. And I am one of them, and uh, I think that the, the union has a responsibility about that. He said to me, I am so busy now. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm coming tomorrow. Maybe I'm coming the day after that. I work for him six, seven days. And, and I am patient because, you know, I used to stay in the jail in Sudan, city for seven, ten months. It doesn't matter. You know. I wait for him seven days and I sent him an email last Saturday. And, uh, clear email saying that uh, his uh, lack of communication with me, his lack of response to this important matter is reflected. The union as organization, uh, it should be representative of all the people. And he uh, responded to me immediately, just uh, 10 words, saying that he been on leave and uh, he's uh, contacting me, uh, contact now from his iPhone, he's going to come and to see me Monday. And he didn't come on Monday. And we are now Thursday. I am not going to stop you. I know, you know what I'm going to do. You can't keep silent. No, no. at all. <laughs> if I can keep silent, it's better to stay there in Sudan. <laughs> Nothing make me come here if I can keep silent. And really, I think uh, I want for the socials to to take it easy. <laughs> really, to take it easy. I, 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 I am socialist, and I am agree with him. But my experience is like we establishing such kind of movement. I think is new for this country. We try to get different people from different kind of respect to work together. And uh, and to be honest, original people they have their. There, there are things about us, <laughs> of course, you know. And, 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 and I am not amazed about what happened now. I think it, it's going to be like that. If, if the people, they want to be uh, frustrated of what happened today, we're not going to do anything. It is like if you keep not communicating with someone for so long, and you start communicating with him, it's not going to work for the first time. <laughs> it need it need a time. We need we need different different ways. Not classic ways. Way, ways. We we need your, we need to work in any kind of way that to get all of us together and to get the people together. Give him, him give them a right to tell their stories to share it. And now the thing is, is, is more, more easier than, than in the past. We have a social network. It is very easy for, for the people using a lot of ways to get together. I think uh, this is a big issue. And it is for life. And it's been for a long, a long, a long time. It, is. it doesn't start. Uh, 10 years or 20 years or 40 years or 50 years. It's a big issue. And I really is going, as he said that, he's, he's going to destroy the life of us. And because of that, we have to give him, to give this movement as time as we can. And we have to create a lot of ways to get all the people together. And I suggest, suggest now, we can start for groups. We can organize Sudanese community, community mm -hmm. and we want to, to ask uh, the original people to come and to share their story. Because we don't know. To be honest, 
I don't know even about what's going in the in the in the, in the embassy. Tenant, you, you can't ask someone to to back you. And <laughs> we get our information from the from the media here, and the media here tell us what they want to tell us. You know, and for me it's very hard to go in the internet. I don't like to, to sit in front of. I I, I hate it. <laughs> I always believe in books, you know, and I believe in people to talk to me. To share with me their, 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 their stories. I want to look in their eyes. I believe in after that. And it makes a change. And it makes a big change. And thank you. Thank you. You have to do perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, I'm Miranda. I'm uh, with the Refugee Rights Action Network. Um, uh, yeah, just to pick up on a few things that I don't, I don't get your name. Muhammad. Muhammad. Uh, um, that Muhammad was saying. Um, um, you sort of said that uh, there hasn't sort of been much of a movement. Like I think there's been uh, sort of quite a few movements within Australia, and like um, you know the Aboriginal Freedom Rise, and uh, you know to get the vote uh, was actually you know uh, the first sort of organisation that picked up on that. Were the trade unions. So with the mm. the Warfies Union, and they, um, you know, they made particular efforts to um, to uh, bring out leading Aboriginal uh, activists and uh, tour them around various like union branches and public meetings, and they passed the hat around and really kept a lot of those people going. Um, and uh, you know, at the same time, it, it is important to um, hear, you know, every little instance of absolutely disgusting, abhorrent racism. Um, but while, you know, while you absolutely detest those people, uh, you know, within the community who think nothing of making these throwaway comments, uh, you know, uh, that just make your stomach turn, um, you know, it's, I think the people that, uh, that you need to focus on are not just those racists within the community, but actually, you know, the policy makers, actually Colin Barnett, actually the police... Uh, commissioner who today described the events at Harrison Island as a successful operation, mm -hmm. you know, and said, don't worry everyone, you know, we're leaving police down there to just make sure the area is secure. Like, uh, you know, racists in your everyday life are, are bad enough to hear them. But these people are in power. These people are the ones who allow Howard Sattler to tear Marianne McKay apart, to, uh, yeah, air that, um, that person's comment about shooting people. Mm -hmm. Like, these are the people who actually like disseminate these ideas and these are the people who allow, you know, Channel 7 and Channel 9 and whatever else to run these questionable stories that make these tiny little comments to the fact that there were hundreds of people down there trying to uh, avoid having rocks thrown at them and, you know, the same with so many other campaigns centred around racism. Like, and, you know, in the, in the, um, the 70s when um, uh, Indigenous people getting the vote was the thing, well, yeah, like, there were so many atrocities going on, the fact that people were still being paid in rations, the fact that, you know, women were constantly assaulted, that, you know, you could just go on. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, um, you know, the rations or the violence. It was, we want the vote and we want uh, legal standing. And, like, you know, whether Aboriginal people actually have legal standing today is quite debatable. Mm -hmm. But that is, um, you know, I think you really have to target those people who are truly who truly hold power, uh, you know, within society and their lawmakers and their police, etc. I think that's a good point, so... Well, we were, only, we were only recognised as human beings mm. in 1967 through a referendum. Yeah. We were classed as fauna and kangaroo. Yeah. Mm. I mean, just a point, uh, when the, um, the issue, the campaign we ran around very recently of Mr Ward, in uh, uh, the Aboriginal who was killed uh, a few years ago. We had it started with a smaller meeting than this. Mm. We had, I think we had about six or seven at the very first meeting that was campaigning for justice for Mr. Ward. Through that campaign, we, I think we had three and a half thousand people on a demonstration in Perth uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, protesting against what they'd done to Mr Ward. And while 
it, we didn't get everything we wanted. We, the family did get compensation. The G4S company lost the um, contract. Yeah. contract. The Bail Act has been changed, and they got rid of all the crappy vans. But they never got jail. <laughs> yeah. but, they never um, got but they never got never got jail. No. But I think if we'd have done nothing, nothing would have happened, would they, mm -hmm. Uncle Ben? So that you know, we we did make some successes, and we started both from a very small base, mm -hmm. and we managed to bring. Aboriginal community together, we've got people from the white community, we've got people on that demonstration from the African community in support against the injustice against Mr. Ward. And we did put the Premier, we put pressure on, on the government to make some changes. So, so some good came out of it. Obviously, the, we even forced WorkSafe to take the government to court, and we, we, we got the guards to court, and we got the uh, company to court. And they were all found guilty, and they all pleaded, well, everyone apart from one of the guards pleaded guilty. But they were all found guilty, unfortunately they were fined. Not, not, um, for murder. not for murder. For murder. Fine they for were murder. fined, right. and not, uh, not to put in prison. There was another young fellow by the name of Humphrey Wood, uh, Humphrey Wood's son. South African police, white police, down there killed him. They're still working there. Carlo Callahan covered up for him. That poor mother went to a funeral in Katani. Killed her that much stress and 